anyone's toe, families for safe for drug control. Today we have brought people from all over the world, from Afghanistan, the Philippines, Kenya, Canada, the US, and we are united in saying that the war on drugs is not protecting our youth and our children. The UN is about to have one of the most important summits in nearly 10 years, and we want to make sure that our voices are heard. It's being run on the slogan, achieving the 2019 goals, a better tomorrow for the world's youth. We do not believe the drug war and continuing with our policy will work. We must demand change. We want to speak to our leaders who are going in there to, to, to make the decisions. We want them to hear our voices, to hear our stories, and to make sure that they make change. We want them to listen and spread the war. The drug war must end to protect all of our children. Thank you. The drug war isn't really a war on drugs. It's a war waged against our families. This silent but deadly war has caused too many casualties, too many senseless tragedies. It has robbed the children of their futures. It's taken away basic human liberties. It has promoted discrimination against people of color and people who are born to poverty. It has fanned the flames of stigma and worsened the epidemic of overdose deaths. It has caused kidnapping and murder because of the illicit drug trade and drug cartels. It has eaten away at the very fabric of our lives and it has wreaked havoc for families across the globe. I'm Gretchen Van Spurman, this is Jane Slater from the UK and I'm from uh, A New Path, Parents for Addiction Treatment and Healing and I'm the lead organizer of the International Mom Tonight and the War on Drugs campaign. We're proud to partner with anyone's jobs in the UK and with families from so many, as Jane said, so many other continents and countries. My two sons are standing with me today. They are survivors of the war on drugs, a period of prohibitionist drug policies, of incarceration and of accidental overdose. We're here today to tell our stories and to lead the way to therapeutics and the story of drug policies. Grieving and angry parents and families are speaking out to end this disastrous war. We share our frustrations, our outrage, and our tears. Throughout history, money has come forward for the sake of the children, to promote life-affirming policies. In the 30s, a group of mothers were instrumental in ending alcohol prohibition in the United States. Not because they were in favor of alcohol, but because they wanted to stop the senseless death the corruption that was caused, and the gangland violence that was caused by prohibition. Prohibition didn't work then. It doesn't work now. So we are, to, we are together, family members, mother to mother, father to father, sister to sister, brother to brother, across continents, to call for peaceful solutions and to stop mass incarceration, and drug war violence, and end the global war on drugs. The UN is leading a global war that is killing our children and destroying our families. We ask our governments, our UN representatives, to join us in seeking more enlightened approaches to adopt policies that reduce the harms associated with drug use and addiction and to explore policies of legal control and regulation. Thank you. So this is a time for me to demand a change in, in Afghanistan. We, I, through this voice, I would like to ask everybody to ask the government of Afghanistan and the United Nations member states to stop the drug war, which kills our families, which kills our children, and which kills our youth in Afghanistan. And we have lost. My daughter's dying wishes were that I brought education to the <coughs> judicial, to the legal, to the health systems in Canada to let them know a different way of approaching drug users. My daughter died of an accidental overdose to opiates. She was in hospital under the care of an ER doctor who was ignorant in recognizing and responding to overdoses. I had the human right to expect that in Canada, my daughter would have received the health care appropriate to her. I want to applaud the Canadian government right now, our new 
uh, Canadian government because for the first time in many, many months, 44 months to this Wednesday, Thursday, they've listened. They've brought in mandates for naloxone to make it an over-the-counter medication for all Canadians to have in their medicine cabinet. Yeah. On April 20th, the second reading of our Good Samaritan Bill will go through and then it will be sent to um, Cabinet for consideration. We expect this law to be put in place within a very short few months. Yeah. So they want to be lawyers, but no more. They don't want to be lawyers. Also, they mess them up and they can't be lawyers. So this draconian uh, law, these draconian laws, this mass incarceration, and the keep revving up and revving up and make it stronger, the old the old new Jim Crow has never died. And so we're still having a, we're still having a problem that the black man's going to have, and I'm standing here for mass incarceration, over criminalization, and to change these draconian laws uh, that are threatening the black man, woman, girl, boys, all of us. And I wear many hats to represent and help these other organizations as well. So I thank you so much for your time. I want to thank everyone for coming. All these families are available for interview afterwards. We please, we really are urging our leaders to listen to these stories when they go into the meeting this week. They need to have these stories ringing in their ears and they need to remember them. We cannot keep going with failed drug policies. We urgently need to end the war on drugs. Thank you. The Ongar's slogan, a better tomorrow for today's youth. Sounds like a very nice slogan, but it will only happen when we put our families' health and safety first. Our voices must be heard for the sake of the futures of all the children in the world. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for all of our partners. This was a huge organizational feat. Thank you for being here. <laughs>